0, C1, C1. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, trainees. So this is the first day of our training, right? So since this is the first day of our training, so I would like to introduce myself. So I am Nelson A. Martinez, and I will be your facilitator and of course your trainer for the whole duration of your training. But before we start, so I would like to get your attendance first. So kindly write your name and your signature here. So are you done? So can I get the attendance sheets? So once I called your name, please raise your hand for the confirmation of your attendance. JP Gonzaga. Thank you so much. All right. So the course or the program that you've been wrote to us is Shielded Metal Art Welding NC2. So this program has 268 hours in training. So by the way, thank you so much for choosing our institution, Tyler Christian College. So we are a TESDA accredited training institution which aims to provide quality training to our students. So you know why? And you know that? That Tyler Christian College is one of the best schools in our city. Why? Because they offer these following programs. So they offered pre-elementary, elementary, junior high school, senior high school, and we also have the general academic strand, the TBL or the technical vocational livelihood. So under that, we offered the following NCs like visual graphic design NC3, cookery NC2, bookkeeping NC3, and shielded metal art welding NC2. So TCC also has facilities and resources. So as you can see here in the picture, so we have the computer laboratory. So we also have classrooms with fully air conditioned. So we have library, science laboratory, and of course, clinic. So these are the facilities and the resources of our institution. Now, so during our training, so we will go into use is what we call the CBT approach. So what is that? Or the competency-based training approach. So this approach is very different from our traditional style of teaching. So I'm going to discuss to you one by one. So number one is the learning is competency-based or modular in structure. So meaning to say that we will give you modules that contains all necessary skills required on the qualifications that you have chosen. Next one is better learning with industry and school partnership. So meaning to say, so after your training in our institution, so we will send you to your OJT. For what? This is to give you a better learning through actual applications of what you have learned. Thirdly, is that the training is individualized or self-paced so the learning is done by the learner of own pace. So meaning to say that you are the one who will set the speed of your learning. So you can slow down or speed up or even stop or repeat a certain task which you think that you are not yet ready, confident, or competent to perform with. So number four is that the learner is based on the actual practice or industry practice. Number five is the training materials are directly related to the competency standards and the curriculum. So number six is that assessment of learners is based in the collections of evidences of work experience based on the industry and organizational standards. Number seven, the system allows the recognitions of prior learning or RPF. So number eight is the system allows the learner to enter or exit at any level and time. So number nine is training programs are nationally accredited or registered within the U Trust. So what is that? That is unified Tibet program registrations and accreditation system. And lastly, 
training materials are directly related to the competency standard and the curriculum. All right? Now, so during your training, so we will assess you based on your skills, your knowledge, and of course, your attitude. Okay, so next slide. So this one is the CBT delivery. So this is the flow of your training. So first is the student will enter the program. Then he will select or choose the qualifications that he wants to learn. Then after that, he will undergo the orientations just like we are doing right now. So now, during the orientation, so the role of the trainee and the trainer will be discussed. Then after that, I will administer RPL and PNA. So what is the importance of this concept? So when we say RPL, or recognizing prior learning, so it is recognizing of a current knowledge of the trainee. So meaning to say that if you have an existing knowledge with regards to your chosen qualifications, so we will give you credit so you can skip the specific competencies that you already know. But of course, it will be validated through what? Through pre-testing, through submissions of achievement certificates, through uh, submissions of TOR, or even your employment certificate. Now, then after recognizing your RPL, so that is the time that I will assess your training needs through TNA or training needs analysis. Now, after identifying your training needs, I will organize your learning strategy based on your learning style. So whether you are kinesthetic, whether you are visual or auditory learner. Then, that is the time that you will select the competencies that you want to learn. So of course, don't worry because I'm going to give you an instructions and of course, I'm going to give you your CBLM or the competency-based learning materials. Now, after receiving it, so you have to review this learning package. Then I will let you view the multimedia materials. Of course, you're going to use also the manuals. And I'm going to do the demonstration, but you have to observe it because later on, you will do your return demonstrations. So you will go into practice your skills in our practical work area. Then you're going to receive assistance and feedbacks coming from me. All right? Okay, so now, so now if you feel that you are confident to do your return demonstration, so that is the time to attempt to do the tasks. So while doing that, so you're going to rate your performance while I also rating it too. Then once I found out that you are competent enough on that specific skills, skills so I'm going to give you your next CDLM. But don't worry because the process is the same. But when I found out that you are not yet competent to that, so you have to go back again and practice it once more. Alright, now... After completing all the modules, materials, and all the assessment methodology, so you may now exit the program. Then, that is the time that I will administer an institutional assessment, which will let me know if you are now ready to take the national competencies. Is that clear? So, do you have questions on that? So, if not, so let us now continue with our slides. So next one, so we have different approaches. So we have traditional approach and the CBT approach. So this one, in traditional approach, instructors focus on managing instructions, while in CBT, trainers focus on managing learning. So in traditional approach, most students enter at about the same time, while in CBT, trainees enter various times throughout the year. Now, in traditional, students all cover the same material. While in CBT, different trainees may be training for different occupations within the same program. In traditional approach, students all proceed from one topic to the next 
at the same time while in CVT approach. So each trainee or each trainee progress at this or her own pace. Now, in traditional approach, all students are usually tested once, while in CBT, each trainee is tested when ready to demonstrate mastery. So, in traditional, very little continuous feedback is given, while in CBT, so immediate feedback is given to each trainee at critical points in the learning process. So, in traditional approach, the instructor is involved in the teaching only one topic at a time, while in CBT approach, the trainer must be able to answer questions on many different tasks each day. Alright, so next is that. This one, I'm going to discuss to you the role of the CBT trainer. So what is what are the roles of the CBT trainer? So number one, it manages learning or a consultations rather than a provider of information a facilitator of learning. So another one is stimulates trainees, the motivations. Number three is evaluate students' achievements. So number four is to assist learners to obtain individualized rewards. Five is assist each trainee in designing a personalized plan of study. So number six is help those students who really need help. Seven, diagnose and solve learning problems. Eight, is install confidence in the learner by providing experiences where learners may succeed. Number nine, is serve as a model for desirable work habits, attitudes, and task performance in the occupational field. Number ten, is spend more time interacting with students. And number eleven, accepts responsibility along with the student for the task learned or not learned. So, we need to say the role of the trainee is what? To facilitate, to provide guidance, and of course, to provide feedback. So, now, this is the roles of the trainers. Now, what is the role naman of the trainees? So, again, this is the role of the Trainee. So, number one, trainees may select what they want to learn and when they want to learn it within reason. Secondly, is trainees learn at their own rate within program guidelines. So, they may speed up or slow down, stop or even repeat the tasks. Three, trainees may request to receive credit for what they already know. So this is done either through pre-testing or through review or a task list completed at another training site. Number four is trainees may choose how they want to learn individually on a one-on-one -on -one basis or in a small group or in a large group or with audio visuals. Number five is trainees are responsible for what they learn and when they learn it. Number six is trainees decide when they are ready to perform each task or demonstrate mastery of learning to a job-like level of proficiency before receiving credit for the task. So we need to say, so the role of the trainee is to what? To accomplish what is being required, to present the performed task, to monitor his or her own accomplishment, and of course, to be responsible. All right? So, next one, I'm going to discuss to you the rules and regulations. So, we have rules and regulations, of course. So, as you enter in our premises, wear your IDs at all times. When inside the campus or within school premises, within appropriate dress. So, mobile phones must be in a silent mode when you are inside the workshop areas. Then, of course, smoking is strictly prohibited in our school campus. So, trainer shall serve as the program facilitators. So, your electronic devices are not allowed to be charged in any school premises. And problems or issues concerning to the learning delivery or other school-related concern so must be immediately be reported to the trainer or the designated personnel. Alright? So, Next one 
is that so the core competencies all right so this is the core competencies of small so you have two well carbon steel plates and pipes all right that's it so of course your training methods is you're going to have your lectures or discussions interactions and your objective and then of course your assessment arrangements will be in written exam practical demonstrations and oral questioning and your grading system all right so your grading system based on the written test if you got 80 percent and above meaning to say that you are competent but if you got below 80 percent that is not yet competent in your performance test if you got minor defect so meaning that you are competent but if you got major defect or critical aspects that is not yet competent so in your oral questioning that you're able to answer the given situation then you mean to say that you are competent but if you're unable to answer the questions that is not yet competent so next one is the workshop areas so here we have the workshop area so we have the practical work area institutional assessment area learning resource center contextual learning area distance learning area computer laboratory the quality control room trainers resource area support resource or support service and we have also canteen so if you have uh, if you need restrooms we have restrooms clinic and of course fire exits so this is the building diagram of our facilities as you can see here all right so that's all for the slide so do you have any question regarding this slides so no questions so if not so let's now proceed to our pre-training assessment so right now i'm going to administer a pre-training assessment form so this includes the form 1.1 or the self-assessment checklist and pre-test and data gathering tool so i'm just going to give you a one hour to finish this all right so answer it in one hour so are you done so can i get the papers so all right so i'm going to check this after your class all right so the result of the test will be announced tomorrow so do you have any questions so if not so you may now go and see you tomorrow so that is the end of scene one coc one